<laughs> Hello, welcome oh. to Geeks Unleashed. My name is Maud Garrett, Chief Bomb of Geek Bomb, and every single week we get an awesome guest on to talk about them, what makes them a geek, what makes them awesome, how they broke into the games industry, and topical things of the week. Because this is a live stream, you can get involved by chatting below in the comments or hitting us up using that hashtag. Oh my god, I just did a hashtag simple. <laughs> That's hashtag really embarrassing. On Twitter. Geeks Unleashed, our beautiful guest that we've got on this week. He is the creator of a website, Survivor.com. He resides in Melbourne. He was 2012's iNet Top Geek 2.0. We have hung out at the two E3s now in a row. It Correct. is Steve Wright. Hello, Steve. Hello. You're making me blush. That was really nice. That was a few. I don't know how to, know how to follow that up, really. I'll just smile. You don't have to because I've got my two gorgeous girls following that one up. Uh, in the command deck, as usual, we have Taz Pants. Hey. Tazzy. And with the beanie, the girl who loves to kill all the Sims violently and name the Sims after you, so it's kind of like uh, real people are killing in Slave Dunions. It is Saber! <laughs> Hello! I fall in usual, love. It is all in love. If you haven't seen um, Saber's articles and Twitch streams of uh, Saber Plays The Sims, then you are missing out, and you should follow Geek Bomb on Twitch. Um, with Geeks Unleashed, we do like to get to know the panel, so first things first, I'm going to play the quick fire questions. And as usual, it put, I put everyone on the spot. I will ask the first person. They answer those three questions as best as they can, as quick as their ability, and then they choose the next person to ask three questions to as well. So thinking on the spot, the first three questions I have to ask the guest. Steve, are you ready for your quick fires? No, but go ahead. <laughs> Question number one. How many times a year would you drink before midday? <laughs> Never. 365? It's past midday somewhere. Well, it's technically 12.03, so I'm safe, but I did start that glass of wine before 12, so I guess at least one. Okay. okay. Possibly 362. We are all Aussies, and the drinking culture is very, very rife. It just does, you know, it just helps that I'm in LA because it's seven o'clock at night here. Where are you watching from? Make sure you comment. I'd love to know where in the globe we are because we are. Everywhere, really, when you think about it. Second question, are you ready? Yes. Which video game character have you been the most attracted to? Does it have to be a real video game character, or can it be, like, a theoretical one? Oh, I want to hear both, actually. Okay, well... Oh, jeez. Um, real video game character? I don't know. I'll get back to that. Theoretical one. Um, yes. Have you seen that gender bend of Lara Croft? No. Called, Are you talking about the called? cosplay dude? No. Well, ooh, I, I'm not, but I would like to see photos of this afterwards. No, nope, <laughs> I'm talking about um, someone did like CG models of like a shirtless, buff, kind of like Nathan Drake esque looking version of Lara Croft, and he's super fine. Super fine. Wow. I will. Uh, I'll try to find a link and I will send it to people and we can put up the link if you want. What did they call him? He's pervy. Luke? I can't remember. What's what is something? It? it would be like Lars Croft or. Oh my God, Lars. Something. I'm gonna find it now. I'm gonna Jump find Lazarus? it. I'm gonna send you a link and we can put it up. I don't know, but he was fancy. Um, Gender bending always wins in pop culture. I'm I love loving it. that phase at the moment. I, actually, let's. I'm going to write that down. We'll talk more about um, cross playing because that's really, really cool. Um, nice. I, I still know have actually... no idea who I'm. Real character? Probably. Actually, you know what? I've got a soft spot for like Cloud and like and Titus. Kind of like the like super like fair ones. They're all yeah. pretty with like huge swords. Yeah, okay. Take, take <laughs> that however you like. That is fine with me. <laughs> and your last question, what game did you play that made you realize that you were a gamer? Oh, geez. Um, these are tough. This isn't fair. Um, recently, Child of Light, because I'm playing it right now and I can talk about it because it's fresh in my mind. It's, it's a great little $15 not indie indie game by Ubisoft that just, you know, like, 
if you're upset or you've had a bad day, you go and play it, and it's just, you know, like massive stress relief, and if you're wanting to be hardcore, there's all these different elements you can get in the combat system, so you can, you know, like, really excel, and, you know, you can use strategies and get spreadsheets and see what counters that and this, and it's just, it's quite a great little game. Quite enjoy it. Done. Beautiful. There are your three questions. Now it's up to you to ask Saber three questions. Who is the least attractive character in video games? Oh, Ganon, probably. Ganon would go to pick mode. And, and why? Because he looks like a giant gross, gross thing. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, that, that is quick fire. That was off the top of my head, which is the point of this. That's true. Second question. If you had to show someone all the Star Wars movies, would you include or omit episode one? And why? Episode one, two, and three, or just episode one? Well, hey, you can answer either way. One's the worst okay. by far, in my opinion, but I'll, I'll leave this to you. Do you know what, though? I have a soft spot for Watto. I've been doing Watto impersonations all week. If not, his mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the charm nice. and charismatic personality of Maud. Um, I would make sure they watch all of them. I feel that's very necessary. Although, like, you know, I love it, but I like the first three, or even, as you say, number one, but I like all of them. Um, but, you know, not as much as four, five, and six, or four and five, generally. But you have to watch all of them. It's Star Wars. I, mean. I feel like episode one was the real one that um, addressed what metachlorins were for the first time. You're like, oh. Yeah, that that's true. Me. That's very true. But these are your questions. I'm sorry, I'll shut up. That's no, okay. that's fine. <laughs> Um, the last question, I'm assuming you like comic books, and if you don't, that's, you know, we'll have to have words after. Marvel or DC? DC. Why? You're awesome, but why? Uh, I'm a huge fan of, I've just never really taken to any of the Marvel characters. I'm just a big fan of, I'm just looking around at all my little bits and collectibles. Um, I'm a big fan of Batman. And, um, yeah, (laughs) I just, I love everything Batman, so... You know, I love all the supervillains and I love all the superheroes. I love all the characters. I love everything Batman. So that's why I have to go DC. Ah, oh, it's very pretty. <laughs> Batman's amazing. UK, you win. Good work. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Saber, there were your questions. It's now time for you to ask Tara three. Oh. Um, fantasy females. Go. Which is your favourite? Who would you... My favourite fantasy you know, female. Who would you... Who would you... Oh, who I would turn for. Do the, the lady deed with... What? The lady deed. <laughs> Wait, from like... That's really broad. Is it TV and movies and games? Every... Every... Okay, games. Just games. Yeah. Probably probably the most recent Lara Croft. No, there's not really that many attractive females in gaming. What? Like, who, are, who else, man? That that oh. old, like that aren't hypersexualized, you mean? Yeah, exactly. I don't want yeah. just boob. Oh. What? You don't want what <laughs> don't want like what's the what's the did did he uh the the gr- Donkey Kong the female? What's her name? I have no uh, idea. Did he, uh, Daisy what? Kong? I don't know. <laughs> Something Kong. The horrible I'm female? Just gonna, I'm just gonna go with Lara Crofts. Okay, cool. The, the right, new next, one, not the next, old one. Next quick fire question. If you could cosplay as anyone, like, you don't have to put the work in. Someone does it for you, and you just rock up looking like, hell yeah. Who would you Who would you pick if you could cosplay as anyone? Uh, I'd want to do, like, a femme Ezio or something like that. I like kind of Assassin's Creed. I feel like I should rock that. That's cool. That is pretty cool. Would you cool. fully commit and chop off a finger? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that would be my first I mean, I'm not going to make the costume. I'm not making any costumes, but I will take the finger off. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't my question. My bad. I did suck in traffic afterwards. You're like, hey, listen here, you... Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what switched in your brain? What what movie show sort of made you switch in your brain to think, yeah, I'd love to study film and television? Uh, it was Garden State. It was a film Garden State by Zach Braff. Oh, really? My wow. favorite movie of all time. So you discovered The Shins, because that's where I discovered The Shins. I think I probably knew of them before, but yeah, maybe fall in love with the shins as well. That movie just changed my life. Changed my life. 
Hold <laughs> oh. on. Does that mean you and I would swing for the same girl? I would tell you, Natalie Portman. Yeah. Hell yes. In fact, if I was near her, I think I'd accidentally trip and fall and try and aim straight <laughs> into her. Anyway. I would also well, turn I... for Natalie Portman. Oh. Wait, are we unanimous? With the yeah. full Amidala makeup on, though, of course. Oh, oh yes. my God. And she'd talk to you like that? That would oh, be awful. <laughs> hey, everyone's got some that they do. You know, if it is, if that's what you judging. like, good on you, but that's qu not quite where I'm Can you gonna... imagine with like the, the little dots there? Maud, come forth. It is I, uh, you who I wish in my bedroom now. <laughs> All right, let's go to the movie away and let's go. Anyway, Taz, it's your turn. Yes. Three. Yes. Let's go. All right, okay. Would you rather spend the rest of your life trapped inside a video game or to never play a video game again? One Whoa, or the other. Inside, inside the video game. I mean, I love my life. I love, 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 love. Oh, hold on, hold on. But what if it's like a crappy video game? What if it was Flappy Birds? <laughs> yeah, Flappy Birds. I would rather never play video games again. <laughs> But if it was a game that I really enjoyed, this is a great question actually. I really enjoy this question. Um, the video, ga the video games that we're having at the moment, though, it's always about respawning. So I would never die. It's true. true. Yeah, Every, it's like that movie at the moment, Edge of Tomorrow, with Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt. You just die, you respawn, you go again. I feel, I kind but of then you like live forever in a crappy video game. It wouldn't then be you're crappy with Tom Italy. Cruise. Uh, on the you. question of Flappy Bird, what's everyone's high scores? Zero, because I've never played it. And I'm yeah, so happy good. and so proud of that. Good. Yeah. yeah, you're very, very well done. That's my Morty? Well. Zero. Uh, I didn't even download Taz? it. Taz? Yeah, I think I played on someone else's and got like two, but I haven't oh, downloaded okay. it. Yeah, that game is infuriating. I hate it, but really want to play it all the time. But I hate it. Goddamn worst game. Anyway, what was back your to high score? Okay. Well, I can't get past 31, and that's really low compared to some people. Hey, still, that's better than all of us combined times. Exactly. <laughs> so. I was expecting you guys to be like 70, 80, 102. Oh. Yeah, 371. Yeah. Just. Yeah. It's nuts. I just roll out of bed. I'm trying to bolster on the toilet. <laughs> I Last still have two question. questions to go. I got, yep. Dude, I still have two questions to go. I'm going to destroy you with these. What's oh. the last dream that you remember? Oh, it was oh. last night. It was last night. Um, Nikki Whelan, she's an Australian actress that's been over here. She's done quite well. She was a chick who got her tits out on Hall Pass, if you're just needing a little bit of visual inspiration. Um, I was her bridesmaid, <laughs> and um, she wanted me to distract her um, soon-to-be husband so she could cheat on him the night before the wedding. And I was like, uh, I feel really, really bad about this and you're a bad person for doing this. And she's like, if you're my friend, you'll just ignore this and, you know, let me sleep with this guy that I just met. And I was like, this is so wrong. That was my dream. I remember every dream I've had, pretty much. I did dream you every do it? night. Uh, I don't know. Did, you go, up, did, you, I did I, you go through I it? Oh, okay. I told, her, I told her brother and I was like, what's going on? I don't understand. I don't, this, she's not the person I thought she was. I've never met her before. This needs to be said. I, I've never met her. I've heard only amazing things about her. But in my dream, she was a hussy. Dream Nikki Whelan's a jerk. But uh, at the same time, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Oh, you have been in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Um, what color are your underwear? Yellow. Cool. They kind of match. Um, it's like that yellow. What? Oh, no. oh, I thought you were about to do these ones. I thought you were about to show us your bra. They kind of match. Oh, my bra. No, my T-shirt matches my pillows, and then the yellow on the shirt matches my undies. I'm just like visually. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone comes over everything. into your bedroom, they'll uh, be very aesthetically pleased with all the matching colours. Do you always yeah, colour coordinate your different. shirt look, and your look underwear? Out. No, that's a first thing. But look, just like honestly, out of all the things, this is clearly me begging for a guy in my bedroom. That's this is like the biggest deterrent ever. Hey, so uh, welcome. That's to not true. That's absolutely oh, not no, true. I don't I, believe it. Zach Efron show... is going a little bit like Gaga over you and your Zelda tattoo. And by the way, because I'm meeting you at E3 in a month. If you haven't washed yep. your hand yet, and I'm assuming you haven't because you touched Zac, Lick, Zac Efron's hand, don't head. wash it for a month, and then I'm just going to touch your hand, and through osmosis, I have touched Zac Efron. That, that's yeah. a thing you need to yeah. do. 
All right, thank you. All right, so I I'm going to do a little that. bit of a room tour, and if everyone else wants to detach and do a room tour with me, let's do it. I've got my Final Fantasy walls here. <laughs> I've got my Zelda wall here. That's my favorite poster there. And then I've got a drawing of Link, and then I've got an artist oh. impersonation. I love that one. And then I've got my Star Wars corner. So then you've got Han. That was given to me oh my by God. my brother for my birthday. And then you've got cool. Boba. This is one of my favorites. I know it's hypersexualized, but they are gorgeous. This is my calendar done by a really um, amazing artist. And basically, it's uh, all the fairy tale characters. Last month was a little moment. Actually, holy shit, we've been worrying that appreciate last month because oh, I took a photo. It's so hot. And there's a guy on there too, for see. Check this out. There's a little mermaid. And there's Prince Eric. Is Did she kill thing? Eric? No, he's Looks like it. Oh, he's washed up. How gorgeous is she? Anyway. And then you've got my collectible corner, you've got my books, and then you've got my DC wall, which is Supergirl, my favorite poster of Deadpool and Harley Quinn making out. No Can I interrupt for two seconds? That yeah, picture of Supergirl movie. was drawn by my cousin. Far out! Really? Tom Grummet is my... Oh, he's my second cousin. He um, is an artist based in Saskatoon, where I'm from, and he um, helped create Superboy, like pre-52 Superboy, and that that is definitely a picture he drew of Supergirl. There's no... Um, not that I can see. A sign, a signature. Oh, there, there it is. T it it's says definitely Tom Grummet. It is. It is. T-G-D-H in the year 1993. There you go. <laughs> that is so cool. cool. That is awesome. Uh, got, here, so cool. You keep talking. I'll show these. I'll find these things. Yes, you do that. We've got Jack Gavin who is um, watching it right now. Hey there, Jack. Thanks for commenting. He says that he likes Phantom Menace way more than Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith, which is... Uh, is he alone there? Hmm. Phantom I'm going to go yes. <laughs> yeah. Look, I didn't like Revenge of the Sith. I know it was like trying to go through the whole journey into the dark side, but there's just, I just felt that there was, oh, I'm about to say something that I probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They have... No. Natalie Portman and Hayden Christensen, when they're playing their characters, had absolutely no sexual chemistry. We can all agree to that. The chemistry yeah. that they had was not... The writing was atrocious. It was forced. Oh. It wasn't great. He's like, hello, Amidala. I am older now. You are beautiful. <laughs> and then, But I know for a fact that those two were boning in Sydney during filming. Oh. So the sexual chemistry should have been there since they had gone there. That's a, just really unfortunate that it well, didn't resonate. There you go. Um, also, Marcus, hello, Marcus. Thank you always for watching. Says, the, a favourite female character that doesn't show side boob. Uh, Femme Shep. Shepherd. Mm, that's true. I uh, know this for a fact because front boob. This, is, this is me as her. <laughs> 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 and there is, like, no side boob there. Yeah, power girl, she totally does um, the window tip. Yeah, just just front boob, not side, just full on front boob. Yeah. <laughs> Classy like that, right? I'm all for that one. Hey, Steve, did you find um, any of the pictures? Well, this is I have some. I think I think it's hanging up in my room, oh, and I'll, if I do a tour, I'll do it really quickly. But this is where is it? There's my cousin's signature. But he didn't do the he he did yeah, Teen yeah. Titans for a while. He didn't do the cover of this, but like he did all the art inside so oh I found it and then I got rid of it that is his Superman and Superboy and I think oh, in my bedroom cool. hanging up, I think in my bedroom hanging up I've got uh, a picture of Superman he drew for me so I will if you want me to do a, a tour I will go and walk and find it perhaps I think it's there I don't know it's really bad but you don't know how you've decorated your own house but uh, I'll, I'll look I'll look right now you guys talk I'll walk that's pretty impressive I'll tell you what I mean Everyone has to be related to someone, I guess, but it's just always such a, an exciting thing. Like, I mean, I don't mean to shit all over it. I think that's really, really cool that your second cousin is an artist that I have hanging on my wall. Hey, but um, at the end of the day, my time? second cousin is married to Commissioner Gordon. What? Okay, you really? win by, by far. <laughs> it's not fair. I don't yeah. know where I've put it. 
I moved yeah, not I too long ago, and I haven't put it. I haven't put it up in my house yet. Sorry. I love that we are getting like a, we're still getting a tour. This is like you walking through your house. Yeah, and it's like really dark, and you can't tell anything. Here is the only thing I will show you. There's my little DC Ooh. corner. Nice. Of... I, love, I, love I love that. that. That's awesome. I want. All, anyway. that's missing, all that's missing is just a little bit of Nightwing. I'm pro oh, Nightwing's my favorite. Right? Let's talk about that later on. I can't he's, he's destroying him. We need to talk about Nightwing. I know, right? How, does, how do they not understand that everyone loves Dick? Like, anyway. <laughs> well done. Right. It comes out wrong every time I say it, but I, I stand by it. <laughs> I stand by it. Um, all right, so Survivor, so let's talk about how you created your own website, your own empire, that you're running it, you've got contributors, you know, you've, you've done a great thing. Let's start from the beginning. It's a really boring story, so okay, you asked for it. Um, I came to Australia about 13 years ago from Canada, but it was supposed to be a working holiday for like three months. Um, and my mom could not use a computer to save her life. And it was the same time that Jeff Probst's Survivor was in Australia doing the Outback version. I think it was season two. Mm -hmm. I think. I've got like all the DVDs. It was definitely season two. Um, and it was a way for me to make a website and like put up travel posts and stuff like that so mom could like go to the computer and click on the big blue E and that would like show her what I was doing and I didn't have to call every two days and I could just go and, and do my own thing. Um, and then I met someone and the, the temporary trip turned into a I'm living here thing and um, I've got a degree in journalism so I put it to use and I started doing kind of game reviews and they seemed to, to pick up a lot of traction, so we turned into a proper video game website, and that was about five years ago, and we've done a couple packs, a couple E3, and we've got ten, uh, ten writers doing previews and reviews and interviews and opinion pieces and a podcast and regular, like, weekly features, so the website is good, and you should go to it. It's Survivor, or if you want to call it Stevivore, whatever. I don't even care, as long as you spell it. Stevivore -E is like Herbivore. Like, what? <laughs> It is, it is a really dumb combination of Steve and Survivor, which is what I was aiming for when I was on the public, or like the, the working holiday, but it, it's too late to change it now because we've got enough kind of awareness, and I probably should have done it way sooner, but you know what? Own it. Kotaku's a thing. Vux, Vux.net, that's a thing. So mm -hmm. it's a random made-up word. Who cares? It's great. Hey, Steve, I wish I changed my name 10 years ago, but I'm stuck with Maud. <laughs> Oh. Well, okay. What would you rename yourself ten years ago if you would have done it? Uh, ten years ago, I was going to do it. I had the Depol pages. I'd save my money. Oh, really? It cost money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it. I was serious. I looked my mum straight in the face and I was like, "Mum, I love you. I hate my name." And she's like, "Oh, but it's so sweet. I love your name. That's why I called you Maud." Uh, that's actually a really spot on impersonation of my mum as well. Um, I was going to call myself Emmy, E double M I E, and there's a reason behind that. I like the name Emmy, I thought it was fun, I thought it would suit me. Uh, and my name is Maud Elizabeth Garrett, M E Garrett, Emmy Garrett. And I was so set on it, I loved everything about it, I was testing it out, I'd get drunk on a Saturday night and be like, oh, that name's Emmy, and they'd be like, Emmy, cool. And I was like, whoa, I didn't have to say my name 19 times before you got it, it wasn't like Morgan, Morgan, more, more on, more, what, I don't understand, how do you spell it? Um, and then I met an Emmy, I don't know if she'll ever watch this, so I'm going to pay her out, I used to work with her, and I was like, she's like, hi, my name's Emmy, I was like, What's wrong with your face? <laughs> she had shit face. She had resting bitch face so bad. And every day that I saw her, she was just like, "It's like, how was your weekend, Emmy?" She's like, "Oh, it was so good. I had the best time." And I was like, "I can't do this." And that night, I ripped up the pages. I was like, "Emmy wrecked it for me. I cannot, I cannot, you know, jump on board with Emmy because of her." So if I'd never met her, I'd be Emmy today. I think we should thank Emmy. I think you should be very proud of your name. It's a great name. It makes you unique. You and that's and brilliant and all those like warm, fuzzy things. You and my mum should have a, a cup of tea together. She would love it. At that. least <laughs> you don't have the name Tony. Like, I just get Italian mobster all the time. Oh, isn't that a boy's name? You're Tony. You're Tony. <laughs> that's what I was. But everyone knows you as Sabre. You're Sabre. Yes. 
I'm Sabre. Oh, you are so Sabre. I can't see this. I get better. I'm but Stephen that... with the PH, so I get like the, oh, hey, Stefan. It's like, that's not actually my name. Well, you shouldn't spell it like P H E N. Well, that's how Stephen spelled. Like, <laughs> Like what? What's the what's the argument to that? Like, well, no, it's that's my name. So you're an idiot. So like, I could spell it X Q five three, and if it's still like Stephen as I pronounce it, like that's that's what it is. It. Be thankful okay. it's not X Q five three. All right, that's. <laughs> but I go by Steve because it's way easier. <laughs> so I shouldn't really say that. I don't mind X Q five three. I think I could really, really use that one. Um, We've done all the work with the deed poll, so tell me how that works, and I'll I'll, I'll put it in motion. Done and done. Um, Steve, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, um, how do you start a company? Is it, just, is it just getting a website and then dedicating yourself to it? How much hard work is it to get it off the ground? It, I wish I had a better story. I kind of just go with the motion. Go, like, you know, roll with the punches and see how it goes. And, and um, I think Daniel Vukovic, who runs Vux.net, and I are probably going to think about doing, like, a PAX at panel, or panel at PAX or something, kind of just talking about it. Because, like, anybody can start a website now. And anybody can review a game and put up their, you know, their opinions. And in Australia, you know, like we maybe get games when the the U.S. does to, you know, publish at a timely fashion, or you might not. So, you know, the the, the difference is, you know, be passionate, but also be able to write, or or at least have someone edit to know what they're doing, so it's presentable and great. Um, but you know, like new websites pop up all the time; they just don't last. So. If What's you're going to do it, you have like, to be absolutely committed to it. And, like, I've, I've got a day job that, you know, pays the bills proper. And then, you know, during the day we put up 15 news stories and, you know, unique pieces of content. And sometimes it's the worst. Like, you just, you'd rather do anything else. You'd rather have a sleep in or just not do it. But if you, if you want to do it, you do it. And when people start reading and, and they interact with you and, like, they go to you for news, then you kind of feel obligated to continue doing that. And it's it's really, it's, it's hard work, but it's super rewarding. And um, I, I would never, ever, ever, you know, decide to, to quit because it's just, it's great fun. So to put things into perspective, what's an average week like for you? How many posts would you write? How many hours do you put into it? What are the kind of things that you do churn out? You were saying you've got, you know, the website, the podcast. Like, well, what does it all amount to? Um, so there's uh, at least... 12 to 15 posts a day, and I usually uh, alternate news with um, our news editor, Leo Stevenson. Shout out. Hi, Leo. Um, he's like the baldest, most attractive guy ever. Like, I used to be the pretty one at the website, and now he is, and it just, it's crushing because people are like, oh, you're here. Great. Where's Leo? He's over there. Steve, I have a team of bombshells. Bombshells. Okay, True. Right here. Okay, good. You feel my pain? Good. <laughs> Um, the website look, takes about an hour and a half babes. to record a week. Look at these gorgeous girls. They are gorgeous. You're the Sorry. chief bomb. I'm in charge of like the, what you guys see as well. So I'm just gonna the take... pimp. The pimp. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Let's get back to business. The website takes an hour and a half, and it's usually, we do it on a Friday night, but, you know, like, oh, no, my Friday night's, you know, wasted, but we also get, like, a case of beer during the podcast recording, which if you've heard the podcast, you might tell, because it starts quite classy and generally degrades into drought, kind of, like, slurring nothingness. Um, and then, you know, like, if you've got some reviews on, depending on the month, You've got to play. It's it's like first world problems. You've got to play so many games so yeah. quickly, burn through the story, get as much opinion as you can. And I used to be really worried, like putting up reviews for embargoes. Like, oh, what if I, you know, gave it a an eight and everybody else gave it a four? What what's what are people gonna think? But reviews are inherently your own opinion. So as long as you can back it up with like well thought, you know, structure of of, of content, then you can give it a ten as long as you can back it up. So. Hey, it's always tell, a learning process. This is one of my favorite things about you, Steve. Tell everyone your Xbox gamer score. Uh, it's high, two hundred and eighteen thousand six hundred and eighty, something like that. I'm the thirty seventh highest in Australia, <laughs> which means there are thirty six people with like higher levels of OCD than I. Two thousand, <laughs> uh, two hundred and eighteen thousand. Oh my god, that's just insane. Like I. It's like. But, the like, no show. muscle there. It's like, there's my virtual muscle. Yeah. <laughs> Do you play on PlayStation as well? If I have to. 
Yeah, right. Okay, um, so you, you're an Xbox if it's, kind of... If it's multi-platform, I will try to get her on Xbox because then achievements. But, you know, like, I love The Last of Us. Uncharted's amazing. I do play PlayStation, but not as my uh, primary console. So that's where I got a little bit annoyed because I had a PlayStation for about four years and finished a lot of games on it and was split. So I was like, but I've got all those trophies, but then I got the achievement points. And it's just like, oh, and it does matter. Like, people look at that and they judge. Everyone's judging all the time. Everyone's judgy judge. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, for mine, it's like, oh, I thought you were a gamer. And it's like, but I I finished. Like, I played 112 hours of Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, okay, and like I unlocked a lot from that one. <laughs> So, okay, there you go. That's my little vent over. Um, we've got Kale Bertrand, Beltran. But you'll, you'll correct me, I'm sure, Kale. Kale wants to know, do you have any moments when you almost stopped the website? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I, I'm an idiot. I set up an FTP account for someone. I won't get too technical, but, like, if you delete the FTP user, you can delete the user, or you can delete the user in all files, and I set up the user in the wrong place. <laughs> and deleted everything about two weeks ago. Now, like, I realized straight away, and I, like, I, I saved most of it, but I think we lost images from, for, like, the last eight months, and, like, I deleted all the posts, but I had, like, backups here, there, and everywhere, so I kind of pieced it back together, but for about five seconds, I just thought, nah, I'm done. Nah, like, that's, nah. That was two weeks ago. Mic drop, walk away. But like for five seconds, and then I thought, no, nah, like what would I do with myself? Like I would, I would have so much free time that I wouldn't know how to to fill the gaps in. And there aren't even good games to play right now. There's like nothing. So like, what would I even do? So yes, but very, very briefly. And I, I regret those five seconds. And I fixed the website already. It's perfect. And I kind of fixed things that I hated about it that I just never got around to. So it was almost like a blessing in disguise. Uh, Tom wants to know what's your favorite game you've ever played. Best game ever. It's a toss-up between Resident Evil 2 and 4. Wow. I love that series. Okay. Love them to death. Halos are up there too, but definitely more Resident Evil. So good. Next one I wanted to talk to you about, I mean, obviously you and I met at E3 2012. Um, we're coming up to our third now, which is really quite beautiful. It's yeah. It's three Pookie Pie. Um, mm. What are you looking forward to? <laughs> right? What are you looking forward to this E3? Let's really break it down. Let's, let's talk about what you're excited about. I'm looking forward to Microsoft probably going to their press conference and not talking about television for 95% of the time. Right. And I'm really, really, I'm really happy that Phil Spencer's there, and you know, they're they're trying to make a push back towards gaming. Like we 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 saw a lot of TV and TV Call of Duty, TV Call of Duty, Call of Duty TV, Call of Duty TV. Like I'm I'm glad we're gonna see less of that this year around. Like I, I want to see Quantum Break. I want Remedy to to make Alan Wake two, but I know that's not gonna happen. But that would just make my entire universe. That game would be amazing. Um. We were kind of talking with other people about what we expect, and some people think it's going to be an amazing E3, and some people think it's going to be kind of kind of lackluster. And I'm I'm in the middle. Like, there's yeah, like what what games do you think are on the horizon? Maybe Last of Us Two from Sony. I don't know what Ubisoft's going to announce. Like a, a last gen Assassin's Creed because they already announced Comet. That's not that exciting. I, I felt a little bit underwhelmed with last year. I mean, they announced the next-gen console, but the games and the quality, like, I don't know. When you go from Xbox to Xbox 360, when you went from uh, the GameCube to the Wii, like, these were exponential jumps because the Xbox yeah. to the Xbox 360 had Kinect, you know, all these kind of things. That was next-level gaming. I guess we, in a way, have, um, you know, Oculus Rift and we have virtual reality for the first time, which is pretty cool, but at the same time... Last year, I mean, I want to see from the, the, the games that we're seeing on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, I want to sit there going, holy shit, are you kidding me? I didn't do that. And I want to. Well, the, the one thing that kind of limits that is that when Xbox went to Xbox 360, you had games like Gun that were on both platforms. And, like, there was some cross-platform stuff going on. But... What's happening now, and it's in like games are getting delayed into 2015. Anything that's released now is Xbox 360 and Xbox One and PS3 and PS4. 
and you can't take advantage of this next gen or current gen if you want to call it that now because they've been released. You can't take advantage of like the new fancy hardware because you have to make a game that still can be scaled down to last gen's stuff. And it's that's the hard part. It's like more games. it's the passing of the baton. You know, it's like yeah. Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Everyone still got them, but then you know where they're trying to get everyone over to the new gen consoles. But you know, you've got to be able to have the balance between both. And you're right, you can't do the mind blowing stuff if We've still got to downgrade in a way. And games like The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt look amazing, and they're, they are just, you know, Xbox One, PS4, P, uh, PC. Uh, Elder Scrolls, same kind of thing, but those games are so few and far between. Um, it's... I, I, I want more of that, but I know that business-wise, it's not going to happen. It's really sad. So... In a, in a nutshell, what, what are the three kind of big things? Have you heard any announcements or anything that they're going to say, you know, to expect? What, what booths are you going to go to first? Who, what are you going to prioritize? I think that we're going to get Resident Evil 7 or a reboot. So that's, like, number one on my list by all means. There's, there's been pictures tweeted by um, Ken Langdon, and I forget the other guy's name, but the motion, act, motion cap actors for... Wesker and for Chris Redfield are putting like photos up saying, "Hey, we're back in the studio." And um, the voice actress for Ingrid Hunnigan, who is uh, Leon's like kind of codecy assistant, she's saying, "Oh, I've got I've got a role back as, as Ingrid again." So I reckon there'll be Resident Evil Seven or a reboot of some nature, and I'm of so excited about, about that. that. Yeah, yep. yeah. Um, Halo Five or Halo for Xbox One, depending on what you call it. Super excited for that. Um, there's, I don't know, not much else. Like, I'm not interested at Project Morpheus at all. It's, I, I, I can't be bothered most of the time going and playing a Kinect game because I have to stand up and, like, waggle. I don't do it. But, that, I mean, I was a real big fan of Fable 2. Fable 3, not so much. But the, 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 the Fable game that they had on Kinect, I was like, huh, I'm just going to punch myself in the face. It was atrocious. So... <laughs> I'm saying, like, I, I, I don't want to put on this thing and you know like stand around and see what's happening and just. Yeah. I know you can't play that kind of game in public. That's for sure. It's not a living room. Yeah. Kind of. Hey guys, are you ready? Let's play. <laughs> it's not a thing. Um, I would do it I to look like Jordy LaForge for like five seconds, but then I'm out. <laughs> Um, I want to talk to you about another thing. I mean, I'm looking to E3. Obviously, keep it to Survivor.com and Geekbomb.net for all the E3 conversations because we're both going to be there. Um, now, recently, I, I think people have kind of pieced together if they've been watching from the very beginning. If you haven't, I am chatting with Steve Wright, who is a creator of Survivor.com. He was the, I love saying this, the top geek for iNet 2012. Um, but you're also quite a, a, I want to say, a vocal part of the gamer community, in a way. Yes, I don't. I don't even mean to. <laughs> I really don't. Um, the 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 thing that I try to be like is I I've done journalism and I've done I've done news. You, you can't bring bias into a news story. So you know, like the the biggest thing that's happened. Um, this week is that Nintendo said that they weren't putting in same-sex relationships in Tomodachi life and that it wasn't meant to be social commentary. So, you know, like, the news story is this is Nintendo's decision, this is their reasoning, this is their statement, this is the past information, and you have to leave it at that. And you do that, but then you're like, okay, well, I'm not happy with that. So you can't build it into the store. You have to, you know, write an editorial. And, you know, like, Nintendo's been doing this for 10 years. Nintendo is making social commentary because they're saying that human relationships go strange. And they're talking about relationships that I would have in real life. And, and yeah, that's... that. I'm saying that it's wrong. So, like, you know, I don't mean to be a gay champion, but, like, you kind of end up being one. But, you know, like, that being said, like, sites everywhere, you know, and, like, Geek Bombshells are ret retreating people that... Um, were making comments on it, and Kotaku and Polygon, and everybody was making comments on it. Journalism is isn't about in like a, in a in a post in our news post, especially you know saying what's wrong with the world, but it's bringing 
what could be wrong with the world to light so others can make commentary on it. And that's like it, that's the most exciting bit about doing news. Well, the good thing about Gig Bomb is that not once, not ever, have we claimed to be journalists. I know that um, uh, people do do that well, but because I'm not, I didn't study journalism. I'm different to you like that. You tell, technically, if I did put down what I am in the honest truth, I am a television and radio presenter. So, by rule, I have my opinion and I have it very loudly. And I did respond to that and I just thought it was a little bit slack that Nintendo, by doing that, by taking out the option of a same-sex relationship, by only making it between a man and a woman and by only being able to have children between a man and a woman, is A, backwards, is B, keeping true to what Japan thinks but not the world thinks. And I just think that it's, it's right. Um, it is pitched to a younger demographic. It is supposed to be a kid-friendly game. But... If a kid's sitting there going, you know what, I think, you know, say little little Johnny thinks his mate Tim is cute, how dare Nintendo then say to him, that's wrong. And in this game, exactly. if you wanted to act out that, you can't because we don't believe in that. And I don't think that that's necessarily right. If, if it's illegal, I can understand legalities behind it. So if Japan wanted to make theirs for legal reasons, absolutely. But the rest of the country isn't like that. And I think that we are slowly progressing towards equality in marriage, but it just seems like a little bit of a stagnant step to then have Japan say, oh, we're not going to change that. In fact, we're going to label the bug. Um, when a man is with another man and it's able to do that, it's a glitch because relationships are strange when that happens. All right, come on, man. And there's there's so many different facets to this like this whole story. Like the, the editorial that I kind of put up says that, you know, like this isn't a new thing. Nintendo's been doing this for year after year after year. You guys love The Sims. The first Sims that came out for Game Boy Advance and for DS, Nintendo stripped same-sex out of it before those games could be released on a Nintendo platform. Uh, Birdo, you know, who used to be a, a cross-dressing male bird who wanted to be a woman. Like, that's been completely retconned out, and Birdo's just a woman. And there's a game in Japan called Captain Rainbow where they want to stress this so badly that... You have to prove, and the Captain Rainbow completely wasted opportunity, just a normal, straight, like, weird uh, Japanese superhero. I wanted to you be Captain to go. Rainbow! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> you have to go to Birdo's house and find a dildo underneath Birdo's bed to prove that Birdo is a female. So, like, same-sex relationships, the worst. Can't put them in games, not normal, but, like, using a dildo, totally fine. Here you go, kitty. <laughs> And, and, and the whole, we're not making social commentary by removing same-sex or, you know, like, jumping at the chance to patch a glitch with same-sex relationships. That yeah, is making, making social commentary. commentary. You're screaming but, social commentary. Mm. It was the worst PR, like, reply to something I've ever seen. And, you know, like, they fixed I, it I, now with that reply, but, like, that should have been the first answer. This game's already there. We can't fix it. We don't patch games. Well, that's a lie anyway. Nintendo's patched Mario Kart and they patched Pokemon. But, you know, like, that's the more PC answer that probably would have gone over better yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I found a little bit... Um, I don't want to say disturbing, but it didn't sit well with me. You tried to kind of obviously project your piece. You're like, this is my stance on it. Does anyone want to share this on Reddit? Does anyone want to kind of ignite a conversation about it? And the comments that you received, I, I, I thought that we were, again, progressing towards equality. Basically, the comments in a nutshell were, I agree with Nintendo. I don't think that that should have been an option. You need to respect Nintendo's decision or shut up, you fag. <laughs> Or, you know, like, my, my favorite one, which is kind of like, and it's it's not even limited to, um, you know, like, same-sex stuff. It's, you know, anything, like racism or this or that or the other. It's like, well, I can think and, and say what I want, and if you tell me that I'm wrong, you're questioning my belief system and you're attacking me. It's like, well, no, I'm not. You know, like, let's put our minds back, like, 100 years ago when women couldn't vote and, it, like, black people had to use the, a different water fountain. You could think and say that. And eventually, enough people decided that was wrong. So you could think and say that, but you were going to be taken to task for it. And and that's kind of where, like, same sex stuff is now. Like it's 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 by and large on the whole accepted, and we're all fighting for equality. But you know, like Tony Abbott, he he's the one who ultimately gets to kind of decide. So it's not going to happen straight away. But you can say and think whatever you want, and, and you are free to do that. But you are not exempt from consequences from what you say and what you speak. And just because someone, you know, questions what you're saying doesn't mean they're attacking you. And 
I don't think I play the victim, but you know, like the people that 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 come back and counter and say, like, "Oh, you're destroying our children's lives," like they're they're victims and they're being attacked and they're so oh so horribly hurt. Um, and I, I conversely to that, I'm kind of going all over the shop, but there's so many things about this. Um, the L.A. Clippers owner who who was an idiot. Like, let's yeah. face it, he was an idiot. Yeah. Um, what what he said was absolutely wrong, and what's happened? Yes, like he was recorded in a in a you know private conversation, and that's the whole other side of the story. But you know, like he's pretty much owned up to it. He's selling the company. Good, good on him. Um, where was I going with that? I've got another uh, example while we're talking about that. Um, even in the fashion industry, the fashion world, Jean Paul Gaultier, he was recorded um, having a massive rant about um, his semantics with Jews. He was against Jews and, um, you know, was almost pro-Nazi, I think what he said, you know. And there was a um, particular conversation that got leaked and he was forced to resign from his major position with that major um, fashion line. So it's the same thing. It's like if you would say it privately, you can't then deny ever feeling that at all. I guess it's like every single conversation you have, you have to stand by it. Just because it's like, well, it's a public one. But I think I know what you're going with this, with equality. Yeah. One of the comments well, I read also was, was like, um, oh, but there's not enough Asians in games, or oh, there's not enough black people in games, there's not enough, you know, there's no transgenders in games. So if we're going to create a for gays, then that opens up a huge door. Yeah. And the, the, thing, the thing with the arguments is that you can't fight hate with hate. So, like, people are coming and, and putting in racial slurs and calling fags, you know, like, but you, you can't do that. Um, the, the equality campaign, which basically started this whole Tomodachi-like thing, was that I'm not saying that it's it's awful and Nintendo's a horrible company for, for not including same-sex relationships, but I'm a gay guy and I want to play a game as a gay guy and I want to interact with my partner's me and I want to have a same-sex relationship with him and you know like that's what I would like thanks and um, you know I'm like always... uh, when Phelps okay. died of the Westboro Baptist Church we didn't go and pick at his funeral saying you know like God hates you because you, you can't fight hate with hate and Snoop Dogg is awesome but you know like Snoop Dogg was calling that LA Clippers owner the you know like white bread and all those kind of things and yeah it was hilarious but can't fight hate with hate because you're never going to bring someone to your side of, of the of your thoughts. You're never going to make someone include like even consider what you're saying. And that's the whole point of equality is you know opening things up for everyone. Um, hold up. We are just going to have a little. What is going? I might be breaking sound. Is that did that fix things? Try that again. Or not? No. No. It's did it make it worse? It's getting worse. No, I don't know why it's getting worse. Just is it bad when it's breaking as well? Because it's not bad when Tara talks. It's not. Is it? I'm gonna mute my mic. Tell me if it gets any better. More talk a bit. Okay. All right. I'll be oh happy God. to talk a little bit. Yeah. You, Tara. Fix. I'm so sorry, honey. It's absolutely <laughs> you. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to get going this entire time. Um, look, to get back on track, um, I guess if I had to have a stance on this particular thing, um, I could understand in a way if Nintendo, with the Tomodachi, if it was actual Nintendo characters, not putting them in same-sex relationships, but because you are a me character, it is representative of who you are. And when you are playing as yourself and then Nintendo is saying, oh, well, I'm not letting you make that choice. We are making your choice for you. That's the problem that I had. It's okay if you had select characters, Tim, Tony, Kim, whatever, and they're all there and they're predetermined. But your me character is who you are. And that's that's that was my issue with that particular thing. I agree with you though, Steve. I love Nintendo. Hell, I have a wall dedicated to Link. It's all amazing. Um, uh, but I'm, I actually I wanted to also say I don't think that you should be ashamed of the fact that you do hold a little bit of a voice for the gay community within the games industry. And I think that equality is something that we should all strive for. Um, so let your geek flag fly, let your freak flag fly. And hell, that's it. And, 
anything else. Is everyone else muted now? Because I can't hear anything else. That's I'm funny. not muted. I think those oh, two are. Did you mute yourself? Right. Yeah, you muted yourself, Steve. Yeah, no, no one can. <laughs> While you unmute yourself, if you look up the Can screen, you again? yeah, that's better. We are good. Okay. Back on. Yeah. I just want to say it's it's live and let live. Nintendo should not make Link gay just because you know some people are making an outcry. Like Link is an established character, perfect. But you spot on. If you have a me in a simulated environment that's pretty much open world, there should be same sex relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And just yeah. because there are doesn't mean that every single person then has to go date Sally or Jim. Like, if you want to have a hetero relationship in a game, great. Ignore the homosexual ones. And vice versa, that's live and let point. live. That's Do exactly that's what you point. want. It's like, yeah. well, as a straight person, I don't think that a gay person should. It's, like, it's really simple. If you are straight, then you obviously go for the opposite sex. But if you are not, then you don't. Like if and it's not, to, yeah, it's not going to change the world and make fire rain down upon us and all these horrible things that, you know... Just live and let live. That's that's the whole point of equality. Like in any way, shape, or form, make whatever character you want, make whatever color you want, make it a rhinoceros. If there's animal options, do whatever you feel like. Cause it's good. It's all good. I'm gonna go to um, question corner because Kale's written us another question. Do you guys prefer ongoing games or games that's in a sex time limit? Kind of story based in comparison to game play based games. It's a question for everyone here. Would you like an on like, I guess an on play ongoing game is like. Uh, those. Some sort of adventure game, I'd say. I guess it's the. Um, no, I guess the, the story games is that there's a start to an end, um, but then you've got the other games where it's just like the continuous game. So you can constantly play Call of Duty if you want to go into multiplayer. Yeah. It's that, you know, All right. Out. Yeah. So we'll start with you, Saber. Would you rather a story game where there is an ending, or would you rather be able to play a game over and over and over? I like to have an ending, um, and I just play it over and over. If I love that game, I'll just play it again. Not that I'm sad. I like the other type too, but, um, you know, I like a bit of Left 4 Dead or there's, like, you know, a few different indie games that I'll play that just don't, you know, I like all games, but I'm just saying that I think I like an ending as well because I can just play it again if I love that game. We are answering all your questions, so we've got ten more minutes, not even. Make sure you type it below. We'll quickly get through them all. Steve, question back at you. Would you rather play a story or would you rather have a continuous game so that you can die, respawn, and the game? Why not both? Why not something like The Walking Dead or any telltale episodic game that has kind of like a beginning, middle, and an end in each episode but also has an overarching story arc? I love episodes. I don't know if we have episodic games right yet or quite right, but Telltale's the closest to getting it perfect. And The Walking Dead, especially season one, just absolutely sublime. Just it, brilliant. It, the Walking Dead season one won Game of the Year um, at the IMGA, the International Mobile Gaming Awards, last year. Um, and I voted for the, A Wolf Among Us. I think that that's an incredible game. Telltale, you're right. They're taking gaming in a different direction, and I absolutely love it. Taz, you, would you rather a game that you can always just pick up and play and go? Or did you, do you want to see the end of the tunnel and do you want to know that you can finish it and watch credits? I can't see you. You're mute. Hold on, just move, move your mouth and say your answer. I'll try and lip read it and tell everyone what you say. Hi, I'm awesome. I play games all the time. No, keep going, Taz. Seriously, I'm nailing this. It's so great. My stuff is just such an idiot. I reckon she'd pick ah, one with the ending. I feel that's exactly what I thought. Oh. Do you like ones with endings? I'm just guessing that's what you'd like. Well, no, I like both of them, but I... <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. <laughs> I, I was killing that. I had to, okay, okay, so Tara, we're not asking anymore. I like to see uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. I like to play a game. I like to pick up a game, finish it. That feeling of completion makes me feel incredible. Uh, keep those questions coming. Harley. Hi, Harley. He has written in saying, Happy Mother's Day to our mother. Chief Geek Maud, that's really sweet. I love that I'm like the mother of geeks. <laughs> Where are my geeks? Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> the Khaleesi of the I'll geeks. take them back with fire and blood. <laughs> <laughs> I am really okay with that. that. Oh my gosh, I think we need to get that's our next t-shirt um, in the Geek Bomb range. <laughs> it's me with my geek dragons. <laughs> Amazing. Um, bombshells around you. 
Yeah, little bombs, like with puffs of flame from the... Uh, what is it? Again. <laughs> um, oh, last thing, Steve, we'll all mute ours if you want to have a big chat about it. Can you talk us through what the iNet Top Geek was? This happened in 2012 and it kind of puts you on the map for all the, the geeky stuff. What was that? Talk us all, tell us all about it. I'm still the reigning top geek because I didn't bother doing another one this year, so I'm I'm happy accepting that award still. Um, INET had uh, a competition where you chose a stream, so you could be an art geek or a comic book. Uh, yeah, that's true, an art geek or a comic book geek or uh, like a pop culture geek or a video game geek, and you can probably guess which stream I went through. Uh, and I yes. won. I made a video, I won that. We went to Perth, because Ionet's in Perth, so that was weird. It was kind of like going back in time to a, a far-off land of, of Perth. Sorry if you're from Perth, people. Um, and went on a live stream and answered uh, a question about who Batman's father was incorrectly, because I got so nervous, I said, Bruce Wayne! And went, oh, that was dumb. It's Thomas, I know that. I, I clearly know that. <sighs> Uh, and I and I won uh, a trip to E3, and they paid for that year's accommodation and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it it kind of helped get people over to the site, and and it was awesome. And because no one else has won it, still reigning champion, I'll still accept all of the accolades and and all of the uh, I don't know f f cool things that come as a result, which is basically me pouring myself a glass of wine. But I will take it. <laughs> I'll let you have it. Um, the last thing that we wanted to quickly touch upon, um, we saw the picture and we put it up on the Twitter page. If you don't follow us at Geek Bombshells, you definitely jump onto it. Uh, Steve wrote an article about uh, a really, really cool cross-gender uh, of Lara Croft, which is, I saw it. Wow. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Uh, I want to talk to you guys. So, uh, obviously, cross, uh, cross play instead of cosplay is taking off at the moment. Do you, do you know much? There it is. That's the one we're talking about. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Could possibly leave the clip tickler alone. I'm not so much of a fan of that giant little bit of hair under the lip. It looks like Shannon Knoll. And if you're not from Australia watching this, that's oh. a good thing uh, that you don't know who Shannon Knoll is. You never want to know pictures. There are other pictures where he shaved that off. So if you don't like oh. it, just keep looking through the gallery. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, but I'm seeing a lot more of it, and I... I can't remember what the con was, but it was called... Maybe you know a bit more about this, Steve, than I do. It was Division. It was... There's a number. It's... Oh, there's, a, there's the other one. Oh, yeah. I love that it's just like, don't need a shirt to find my treasure. Uh, oh, come on, guys. It's not Division 45 or 54 or... If what it's are you talking name. about? Uh, what cross playing was? Uh, they decided. Oh, to Rule Sixty Three. Are you talking about? I swear it was like Fifty Four, but if it's Rule Sixty Three, then yeah. It's Where Rule Sixty Three. Just did an article on Geek Bomb. You should guys should check it out. There's an article oh. up. It was when um, all of the Disney characters uh, were. Yeah. Switched over the gender. Yeah. I, I think sh that. Male oh. Ariel is hot. Mm. Mm. And it's Flanders hot. really cute as a female. Uh, wasn't so much paying attention to Flounder at that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny, guys, when you look back through the movies, movies that were written with no specific gender in mind, or if it was written for a man and a woman ended up playing it, they're some of the best roles that we've ever seen. Uh, Ripley in Aliens, Sigourney Weaver plays her, but that particular role was written as man. And then they went, you know what, let's get her in. And she is one of the best characters we've ever seen. And I think that if we kind of eliminate gender or if we are able to control that or we get a say over it, like, you know, cleaning ladies, or if they're a guy, that kind of stigma that we're in, you know, that there's gender-specific roles, if we kind of change that up, then you get pleasantly surprised. Uh, so rule 63 is when whatever character you want to cosplay as, you do the opposite. So for all of us women... We get the coolest characters! We've got some cool, chicky ones, but frankly, if we had to copy a lot of these outfits, I have to diet for about five years just to do these costumes, or I have to get surgically enhanced to emulate it uh, to, the, to the, the best. I've seen a femme Wolverine before, and she looked amazing. She had shorter hair, and she was able to style it up. Just really cool things like that. 
So I'm going to take it to the panel as our last question. Who would you cross-play as and why? Whoever I already played. answered this, so I'm going to leave that one. It's true. Um, yeah. I know exactly who I would. Um, and Batman. I think he... No. Oh, oh what? No, I want him to do things to me, though. Um, no, <laughs> I desperately want to do this cosplay. Oh, shit. How come every time I pick this up, it falls apart? I don't know. I can't answer that. Oh. Okay, who come, that? come on. It's Han Solo! Oh my god, yes! Oh, nice. I really want to do a Lady Solo. Like, oh shit, why does that always happen? But like, in like A New Hope, and he's got like that shirt on, and it's like low cut, and he's just got like the vest, and he's got, this is when he's got the red stripy bits down the side, and he's got his boots on, and he's like... <laughs> yeah, he's, I love him. I am There's very sexually really cool attracted picture, to him. Um, from... I think it was Glastonbury Festival where a bunch of girls were standing around and their caption was, um, you know, I love the fact that hipster girls are now, they, they don't even realise they're dressing as Han Solo. And they all had white long shirts and they all had like a brown sort of vest slash kind of puffer jacket. <laughs> and no shit, like they're all wearing jeans and they all looked inadvertently like Han Solo. And it was like, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, Steve? You've got a whole bunch of ladies that you could dress as. Who would it be? Would you need to unmute yourself so we can hear? I did. I did. Um, hey. I, I think I might. I, well, just like you think you have to go and you know go on a diet, I'd have to for most of these you know like gender bending characters as a male go to the gym and get abs and have huge muscles like yeah. maybe Gears of War style. Like, <laughs> um, I, I reckon I would just you know try to be creepy and uh, go as Power Girl, but. Power boy, and without you know, like you wouldn't put the the, the see through thing there. You'd have to just move it. No, you put it in your crotch. Yeah. <laughs> so probably have to go and get like a wax or something. But I think that's probably the best way to do it. If you're gonna turn things on their head, I I don't know if you can do it any well, any better than that. Well, technically, you've got two round things that could provide a sense of cleavage. <laughs> I would have to maintain a constant body temperature. I couldn't be too cold or too hot. It would all go horribly. Suggestions like that, Maud, is why I work for you. <laughs> um, mine, I would do the Joker. I think, um, I, I mean, this now, look at this. Surely, surely it was born to You're a Harley. Some sort of... such a Harley to me. Or I'd... I, I wouldn't mind um, being Two-Face as well. I think I would love to be a bit of a Harvey Dent because... I legit be want to do Lady Bane. I'd love to I do Lady to... Bane. But, like, if I if I just rest my face normally, I can actually physically do the face for it. <laughs> I would have to do this all day. <laughs> but, and it kind of looks... <laughs> <laughs> but if I rest... Yeah, if I just, like, I'm normal and I'm... You know, because everyone has their cosplay poses? I think I'm hard on. <laughs> More standard. So I could, I could do, be like, sort of normal. And then... Say hey. Anyway, that's me. <laughs> Having fun. Um, who would you cross-play as? Definitely comment below. If you've got any questions for Steve, how he started his business, how it all goes down, how to do podcasts, how to get views, how to write articles journalism, what you need to know, what you don't need to know, comment below because he'll hopefully check in during the week and answer all those questions. Um, I think the cross-playing one's great. I would love to know your stance on equality within games. What do you think with this whole Nintendo stuff? Oh, that's my microphone. It just got drunk all of a sudden. Um, then to, I, I did say the last one, the cross-playing was, cross was the last one, but we did get quickly a quick question in from Omar. Omar asks, do you think expos in Australia like PAX and EB Expo will be like in the US one day. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Because there's more people in California than there is in Australia. Um, I just think it's, it's because of the, the amount of people. The population of Australia isn't big enough. Um, there's even less in, in Sydney and Melbourne. So they're just, the, better, the more people, the more money, the more attendees. You know, attendees. They're incomparable. Um, do I, do if we you have, compare PAX, sorry, if you compare PAX in like Seattle to PAX Oz, it, we were in a shed last year and that wasn't, you know, ideal and, you know, the interview rooms were off in different places, but we're moving to the convention center this year, so it will be like PAX. PAX Oz and PAX 
Prime will be fairly similar, and you know it probably won't be as as much of a spectacle. But I I don't think we need to go even more American. I I don't, Canadian slightly biased, but you know like <laughs> is, the, the less we do to be American is is better by me really. Uh, Taz, I brought you along to E3 for a day to check it out. Do you think that anything that we get, you've been to EV Expo and PAX as well with Geek Bomb, can you compare mm -hmm. the two? Do you think that they will... There's no comparison. They're, E3 is, like, on its own league in size and spectacle and everything. Like, But I don't think we need that. It's just too much. It's just basically people showing off and no one really needs to see all of that. And EB Expo here is more of a sort of a community thing where you can meet people and, you know, look at panels and stuff. And, and I like that type of convention a lot more than I like the way E3 set out anyway. So I don't think it's a bad thing and I don't think we'll ever reach that level. So that's fine. I, I could use a little less uh, pre-order this game now at EB Expo that's like true. every five minutes. But everything else is, is pretty good. I'd love um, to go to E3. Yeah. Trust me. I, I, I've been to E3 what, twice now. I've been to Comic-Con once, and I've actually prefer Comic-Con. Out of all of them, Comic-Con's my favorite because it has that camaraderie and the, um, you know, everyone's there. Everyone wants to chat with each other. It's a really friendly vibe, you know. So it's got that, that I, what you're describing about the Australian cons, Taz. Yeah. I, I, E3 is all media. It's all press. So they're journalists and they're all, you know, or they're writers or they're bloggers and they're all there to do their job. Um, so it's not as much about having fun. It's getting the story. It's it's getting a, you know getting your big giant list and ticking it all off. Comic Con is for fun, um, and it shits on everything else I've ever been to, and it probably will forever. So Comic Con's my favorite. Do I think EB Expo and PAX will ever be like that? Maybe they can get bigger, but better not in my eyes. Um, to the point where I don't think I'll be coming home if I live here to do an expo because it's I. I even timing-wise, you know, it's not saying that, oh, my God, America's so much better. It's that they come before. So everything that we see at E3 uh, is in June and then PAX and EB after that. So everything they've showcased there and playing games, I've already played it by the time these other ones come around. So, um, you know, I haven't seen anything that I haven't seen already. But that is our time. Thank you so much. Geeks Unleashed, we love to talk about things that happen in the geeks world and we love to um, get on board with all the... Oh, my microphone's drunk. <laughs> I might be a little bit drunk too. Um, with what's going down in the geek world, Steve Wright, Survivor, CEO, Chief in edit, Editor in Chief, what else? Creator, extraordinaire. That's pretty good. That yeah. summed it up, I think. Yeah. yeah. Chief thank awesome you so much. Operator. Yeah. And thank you for um, taking a little bit of time out on your Mother's Day. I mean, it definitely does help that, you know, your mum is, I'm guessing, in another country. Yeah, it's it's Saturday, so it's not technically Mother's Day in Canada, but uh, happy birthday, Mum. Uh, sorry that I live on the other side of the world. She's over it now. She used to be upset by it. She she can deal. Thanks for having uh, me, though. It's been great fun. And sorry, my mic was awful. No, don't worry about that. It is all good. Yeah, Mama. Um, but I really appreciate that, guys. Keep your comments coming through, and don't forget, every single week we do either Geeks Unleashed or the Weekend Geek, where we talk about all things that fall under the geek umbrella. Sometimes we get people talking about. Uh, do that again. Who was that? We get talking about their lives and where they came from. Oh, <laughs> where is she? Best friends. <laughs> where is I was going to show you guys this really quickly. Yeah. My friend got me this. It's a music box, and it's got. Um, all like the superhero characters getting married and everything on oh, it. That's really beautiful. On each side, and it does it plays like when the world needs love. And I'm such a music box nerd. I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. It was really sweet. Oh, I absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah. I like oh, the Batman. You're, like putting, the you're putting a bit on Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good so day. So much fun. Such fun. Thanks. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel that you're watching on. Press the like button if you like what you saw. Comment below if you've got any queries because we'll absolutely answer everything that you write. We have Twitter at Geek Bombshells and we're on Facebook.com forward slash Geek Bomb. This has been The Geeks Unleashed with Steve Wright from Survivor. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your day or night. Bye. Bye. I was being drunk.